Hey guys, um, I wanted to share with you today, and I was going through my phone. In my notes section on my phone, I found a little, um, sort of the notes for this talk that I gave years ago years ago. You know, I started out by talking about uh, Mark Zuckerberg's sister, Randy, and um, basically how she had been interviewed at one point. I didn't even know that he had a sister, but that she had been interviewed one point at one point and had said that really as a woman that there were, you, you kind of had to choose that there were three things that you could do really well. If you took on more than three things, something was going to suffer. Getting out a pen and a piece of paper and writing down all of these different things that I'm trying to do at any given time and then saying, okay, which are gonna be my top three, which are gonna take that priority, right? So um, she talked about friendships, building a company, family, staying really fit and really in shape, um, all of those kinds of things. So I thought it was very interesting because I thought, man, if she is like the CEO of a company and does all of these things, and um, I, don't, I can't remember if she was a mom at the time or not, but also then being a mom and having to juggle all of those things, that's really hard. That's a lot. That's a lot for anybody. Uh, why do I think that I'm special and I can do better? Um, it's It really is, in some ways, a little bit egotistical, I guess, if you really peel back the layers of it, for us as moms to think that uh, we can do better than those who came before us. I can do more. I can do... You know, and it is, it's kind of an egotistical way of thinking if you really, if you really peel it back. And so, uh, you know, obviously there's nuance there in the sense that advancements have come a long way in terms of um, technology and scheduling and things like that. So, you know, lots of women run businesses from home and things like that. So there are changes that obviously happen over the generations, but um, something that I have been thinking about a lot lately um, because of an older woman, uh, chastised me on Facebook recently for using uh, pre-packaged meals for making a dinner for my kids. And she, you know, she kind of said like, women today, her words were, women today are so lazy and pathetic. They don't, uh, you know, women of generations past would grow all their own food, make all their own meals from scratch three times a day, yada, 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 yada. And I mean, of course, my initial reaction to that is just sort of like, that's not uplifting or encouraging to anybody. But it's also a lie. Um, not that those women didn't do those things, but that there are many things that today's modern woman is juggling that previous generations did not. Um, lots of things that previous generations could say no to uh, without any guilt. And that today's generation of moms um, sort of almost is expected to juggle and carry on top of raising children. And there's never anything um, sort of brought into the conversation to talk about help and how not only in previous generations, but in other countries, uh, it is very, very common to have help. We've stigmatized help in this country to mean that women cannot, you're seen as, um, you're seen as snooty if you get help. Um, now, again, there's two very different things happening here. Number one, help in America today and in other, you know, I would imagine probably in the UK and in certain places like that is, it's expensive, right? So it's very expensive to have a full-time housekeeper or a full-time nanny or a hand, a helping hand on your farm or your property or whatever. Those are expensive things. So that's why I think that that adds into why they're seen as um, status symbols and in many ways they are because of what we've kind of created out of it but if you go to many other countries and places that I've traveled to and seen with my own two eyes um, even some of the poorest of the poor in those communities will have help because they understand and recognize uh, that it really does take a village and how much help you need to raise a child, uh, raise multiple children, keep a home, do all of that really well. If you are also then, like I said, growing, harvesting your own food, cooking all your food from scratch, um, there's nobody out there who's doing all of those things without some kind of help. And so, I just think the expectations that we put on moms today uh, are absurd and ridiculous. So giving ourselves the grace to say, 
if we were to say we had to pick three things, okay? Um, I, I said here in my talk, moms of the 80s, um, my mom, you know, being a mom of the 80s, when she was a stay-at-home mom, she cooked, cleaned, helped with homework. She liked to sew, she was reading, she would watch certain television shows. Um, our lunches were sandwiches, Jello. we had Kool-Aid, she would make us snack trays. Um, there were no endless activities or play dates. She wasn't pulling from Pinterest to make all these crafts and stuff. We went outside, we played in the creek, we rode bikes, we skinned our knees. Like that was my childhood. Um, and moms today are expected to keep these Pinterest worthy homes, um, have all their kids eat all organic, healthy food. They've got to wake up at the crack of dawn to exercise, do a whole you know elaborate morning routine. Um, there's 60 million dress up days at school for kids if your kids go to public school. Moms today have all these things. They've got side hustles, they've got Etsy shops or they work for an MLM. Um, you've got a volunteer at church, Bible study moms groups. Uh, and then the expectation is by the end of the day when all the kids have fallen into bed, now you've got to be this this sex kitten for your spouse right it's exhausting it's exhausting to have to be all the things to everybody all day all the time that's why I think that comment was so I don't love the word trigger but it is the, that's why the comment was so triggering to me is because it was like but the women who follow me and read this and will see this and somehow feel guilty about um, giving their kids a prepackaged meal just made me want to go ballistic on this woman. And I have a lot of respect for the generations that have gone before me. I think there's so much to learn and I appreciate the wisdom that so many women share. But the shaming of the generations below, like we've, we, we have to stop that. So anyways, um, I continued on talking about how none of these things that are pulling us in these directions are inherently bad things, right? Wanting to be healthy um, and in shape so you've got energy for your kids. That's not a bad thing. Uh, wanting to do crafts, wanting to be a part of things, volunteer, give of your time, uh, keep your spouse happy. All of these things are, are good things, right? But as what I talked about in here is that just because these things are, are good things, they're not bad things, it doesn't make them the right thing for us in that season of our life. Uh, and as a believer, I've come to realize over the years that Satan doesn't come to us in bad things all the time, especially if you're somebody that feels like I'm making really good choices in my life. I'm, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm doing you know the best that I can. I'm trying to be a good person. I feel like that's when Satan comes in the good things. He comes in the distractions. He comes in the things that take us away from the people that we love most, that suck the joy out of our lives, that eat away at our mental health to the point that all these blessings we have are now burdens to us because we have let them, the idea of them, the idea of being a mom and what that should look like, overshadow the actual boots on the ground daily work of being present emotionally and, and loving our kids and doing the best we can to raise our kids well. Uh, the, the expectations and the weight of those become so burdensome that then we are not living into our potential of the kind of moms um, and wives that we likely aspire to be. So what I would encourage you to do, the takeaway I would like for you to get out of this video is to Recognize first and foremost the season of your life that you are in. Do you have a new baby? Are you pregnant? Um, are you in the middle of a really tough season with a relative that you need to care for? Do you have a child who has an illness that you're trying to deal with? Recognize the season of your life that you're in um, and start there. Okay, put that in your mental place that remember that our life is, our lives are cyclical and they are seasonal. So what you can expect of yourself now is gonna look different than what you expected of yourself two years ago and what you'll be able to expect of yourself two years from now. Um, so sit down and make a list of all the plates that you are spinning, all the balls that you are juggling. Sit down and write them all down. Um, do your best to put them in compartments, right? Because it's not just like three individual little things, right? But, you know, try to, uh, is it your job and your kids and your church family? So write all those things down. Then step back and look at them. Arguably, step in front of a mirror and look at yourself in the mirror and say, the world says that I can have it all. But that is a lie. I can have it all. 
I just can't have it all at the same time. If our lives are like a pizza and we cut it up into slices, you can't, you can, you can slice it into teeny, teeny, teeny little slices, but you can't make any more pizza than is already there. You can't add to the pizza. <laughs> so you must slice it up in a way that makes sense for you and that brings you that joy, the contentment um, that you are looking for, the fulfillment that you're looking for. So when you had that list, the first thing you obviously have to do is pluck out the things that are must do's, right? Some things we don't have a choice in. They are part of our lives, uh, probably in some cases, maybe things that we don't want to be part of our lives, but we don't have a choice. So go to your musts and then look at your choose to do things. That's the list that you really get to go in with a red marker and start saying, I choose not to do this anymore, or I choose not to do this right now. I tend to find, again, as somebody who wants to do all the things that it's better for me to say I'm not throwing this thing away I'm putting it on the shelf for a little while that is much easier for me mentally and it's more accurate to the way our lives go because I may find that in six months or a year something changes with the dynamic of our family and I'm able to take that thing off the shelf and bring it back into the fold of things that I care about and can reasonably manage I hope that by doing this, um, it will make you feel lighter. I know for me, um, when the weight of the anxiety and the stress and all of it is just sitting on me like an elephant on my chest and I feel like I'm just, I don't know how to explain it other than I feel like I get to a place where I'm like, I'm just gonna crawl out of my skin if I can't, I don't know how to fix this, I don't know how to solve this. And so for me, it looks like sitting down, taking a deep breath, and I just start writing things down. Ideas, thoughts, things I need to get out of my head. Um, and then I find people that I trust and love to talk through some of those things with. And then I move on from there and I always feel better when I can sit down, look at things very realistically, look at the big picture of things, what's the most important, what matters most, and then if you've got that written down, you can come back to it whenever you're feeling like, oh, I should be able to do this and I should be able to do that. Um, you can come back to that list and go, no, I said that these were the most important things in my life. Even write your whys down. Write down why that's most important in your life, why this other thing doesn't matter as much, um, and keep that piece of paper folded it up, stick it in your nightstand, stick it in your purse, somewhere where you can look at it when you're feeling frustrated or left out or behind or scrolling through social media and feeling like everybody's doing something that you're not doing. Um, recognize that these were the things that your heart really knew were the things that were going to matter most to you, the things that were going to bring you the most joy and fulfillment. And these other things just need to either go away um, or wait and that's okay. And I think that that's one of the things that we struggle with the most as a society is just this deep, deep seated desire for sameness, for our lives to look so much like other people's, the people around us. Um, it can be a real struggle to uh, diverge from that path and go your own way and do your own thing and say, good for her, not for me. It's one of the hardest statements, I think, um, for us as women to make is good for her and not for me. We tend to think that good for her must mean it's good for me too, right? I should be doing that too. And you probably shouldn't. I mean, in most cases, you probably shouldn't. I'll end with this, that I don't come to you with this because I'm an expert and I've got it all figured out and um, I'm over here preaching to you about how to live your life. I come to you with this because this is a constant um, struggle for me. This is something that I constantly am reevaluating um, and trying to like I said, move things around on that list and go, okay, I can't do this right now. Can I do this? How can I work this in? Um, because I am a multi-passionate person. Um, I have a lot of things that I'm interested in that I'd like to do. And, uh, but you know, my life isn't conducive to doing them all. So I must choose to, like everybody else, I must choose. And um, I just want to encourage you to make those choices, to give yourself the peace, and then be confident in those choices. And Put your blinders on. Don't worry about what other people are doing, how they're living their lives, what they're spending their money on, what their house looks like or any of that. Put your blinders on and focus on those things that matter to you most. Um, that's, that's my, that is my heartfelt um, prayer for all of us is, and myself included is that we can live more fully in that and be better at that and, and get the peace that I think we all so desperately want in our lives. Um, so 
that is it for me today. I hope that this was encouraging to you in some way. I would love to hear from y'all in the comments. If anybody wants to share maybe some things that they're letting go of, I would love, love to hear about it um, down below in the comments. And uh, I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Rainy day